Coming up tonight on New Center Now, thousands of motorcyclists from across New England are headed to New Hampshire this weekend to remember seven bikers killed in a crash there two weeks ago. Safety officials are explaining what they're going to do to keep everyone safe. Plus, a Super Bowl champion who was just in Maine five days ago is recovering from a stroke. We'll explain. And some Mainers are arriving home after setting sail from Bermuda. This is New Center Now. <laughs> Friday evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Lindsay Mills. And I'm Chris Costa. Tomorrow, thousands of motorcyclists from all around New England will travel to New Hampshire to honor these seven people killed in a crash two weeks ago today in the town of Randolph. They were part of the Jarheads Motorcycle Club, made up of active and veteran Marines, and were on a group ride. One of the riders was a member of the Southern Maine chapter of the Jarheads Club. Several New Hampshire agencies met today to discuss their plan for tomorrow's event. Thousands of bikers from all across New England are expected to take part in that ride for the Fallen 7. People will meet at the Broken Spoke in Laconia, New Hampshire at 11, and then the memorial ride will leave at noon and will travel to the crash memorial site in Randolph, New Hampshire. One of the organizers says this ride is about the legacy these bikers leave for future motorcyclists. My personal mission when I started was to make sure that these seven people would never be forgotten, and I think we're on the right path to doing that. Um, other than that, I want to also make motorcycle awareness. Uh, I just want that in the back of everybody's mind, because almost every day you can read in the paper that a motorcyclist was hit, or they didn't see him, somebody came out. I just want to make sure that people know that we're on the road, and uh, you need to look out for us. The ride is expected to close some highway ramps and lanes tomorrow. Riders from Maine are participating. They have police escorts from Auburn and Wyndham and ask that you look out for them in other towns where they do not have police escorts. Let's take a look at some headlines now. Mitchell Garabedian, the man who accused actor Kevin Spacey of groping him in a Massachusetts bar, has dropped his civil suit. There's no word on why the teen dropped the suit a little more than a week after filing it in Superior Court. The attorney for the alleged victim says his client filed for voluntary dismissal of the suit today. The man claims that Spacey assaulted him while in a bar on Nantucket three years ago. The former House of Cards actor pleaded not guilty to felony indecent assault and battery and has denied the accusations. Spacey still faces the criminal case with a hearing scheduled for Monday, July 8th on Nantucket. The U.S. says it is requesting a special meeting of the board of the United Nations Nuclear Agency to discuss the latest developments in Iran's atomic program. The International Atomic Energy Agency says its inspectors confirmed Iran had surpassed the limit set on its stockpile of low enriched uranium. Leaders for the organization say they will hold that meeting on Wednesday. Some of the families of the Ethiopian Airlines victims have rejected Boeing's plan to donate $100 million to help families affected by the crash of its 737 MAX plane. A lawyer for some families said today that the deal offered by Boeing did not eliminate the need to seek reparations. Another lawyer for the family said that so far 15 Kenyan families plus two from Ethiopia had rejected the deal. Well, it was definitely feeling like the day after 4th of July today out there, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. A great day to be out on the water. And out on the weather deck, and that's where we find Jess <laughs> Conley. She's soaking up some more sun. Hey, Jess. Hey, guys. It's great out here. Again, we've got the first Friday art walk going on. It's just another nice night. Temperatures are going to stay warm tomorrow, but we are going to have some rain and some thunderstorms. Here's a look at some of the webcams across the state. Again, just a beautiful night. Look at Standish up to 92 Ellsworth at 85 degrees. Couple clouds though continuing to move in. This, this is a look at our high temperatures today. 91 again in Bangor. We made it to 91 there yesterday too. 86 the high today in Portland. 88 in Lewiston. 89 in Augusta. Now Bangor made it to 91 yesterday. 91 today. And if we make it to 90 or above tomorrow, it's an official heat wave. There's a little nerd stat for you guys. Current temperature right now in Bangor, 86. It's 81 in Portland, 80 in Wiscass at 85 in Augusta. Temperature still very, very mild. It's mild out on the weather deck. A couple rain showers moving into far northwestern Maine. You can see those clouds, though, continuing to thicken up, and that's going to be the case as we go into the day tomorrow. We will start with some clouds around tomorrow morning. Then as we go into tomorrow afternoon, 
Uh, unfortunately, it looks like we're going to see some showers and thunderstorms. I mean, we've had a pretty good stretch so far, guys. Uh, so expecting some showers and thunderstorms tomorrow. I mean, not a terrible thing. Some of those storms, though, could be strong to severe. So definitely something to keep in mind uh, if you have any plans outside tomorrow. Of course, we'll be keeping you updated on that, though, throughout the day tomorrow, guys. Gorgeous out here. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Jess. Thanks. When Congress passed the Farm Bill last year, hemp, a form of cannabis, was legalized nationwide. It's brought a, a flood of CBD products into the market and caught the attention of the FDA, which is now working through how to regulate the industry. Ryan Herrera has more on a potentially multi-billion dollar market awaiting direction from the federal government. Let's get this frequently confusing bit out of the way. Marijuana can get you high, its cousin hemp cannot. Now that hemp's legal nationwide, companies are extracting CBD from it to put in everything from lotion to candy. And that's certainly got the FDA's attention. That's basically what Amylai Labs does. We produce the CBD isolate that then gets used into a product that you might see on the shelf. Christopher Lackner and the team at Mile High Labs in Broomfield are part of the booming CBD industry. A market research firm predicts it could be a $22 billion market by 2022. You know, the $22 billion is just an estimate. Uh, you know, internationally or globally, there's really no telling how large this uh, industry will grow. Walgreens recently announced it would now carry some CBD products in 1,500 stores across the country. If you need another sign that business is booming, take a look at Mile High Labs' new facility. It's a former pharmaceutical plant, 400,000 square feet of space that will soon turn out mass amounts of CBD products. We take our role in production very seriously. Our hope is that other, uh, other companies are going to do the same and certainly be prompted by the FDA to do that. Yes, Smile High Labs wants the FDA to create regulation to weed out low standards. Nine News medical expert Dr. Camilla Sasson says the FDA is now grappling with how to best protect consumers. I think as a medical professional, I think a lot of us are, are really kind of shaking our heads going, you know, show me the data, show me the evidence that CBD oil a is safe, most importantly, B is effective at all of the claims that are out there right now, and then I think most importantly, what people are actually selling on the shelves is actually even what they're saying it is. Mile High Labs doesn't make any medical claims, but they would like to see the FDA regulate CBD as a food and dietary supplement. The administration has opened up public comment before creating new rules. But our message to the FDA at that hearing and in our upcoming comments is don't wait to regulate get regulations on the books now so that consumers and manufacturers alike have a roadmap to success. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, police in Texas have cracked a case involving an ice cream criminal, so-called ice cream criminal. Authorities there say the suspect, who is a juvenile, can be seen in a viral video licking a tub of Bluebell ice cream and then putting it back in the freezer. The Lufkin Police Department says detectives have identified and spoken with the suspect and her boyfriend. Police say she's from San Antonio and because she's a juvenile, her identity is being protected. The case will be turned over to the Texas Juvenile Justice, De Justice Department and remains under investigation. Former Patriot linebacker and Super Bowl champion Teddy Bruschi is recovering from a stroke less than a week after visiting Maine. Bruschi suffered the stroke on the 4th of July, according to a statement on his behalf of, on behalf of his family. Rather, They say he is recovering well and thanked the staff at the hospital where he was treated in Massachusetts. The stroke is Bruschi's second. He suffered his first in 2005 at the age of 31, just weeks after winning his third Super Bowl with the Patriots. He later dedicated his Teddy's Team Foundation to raising awareness about fighting stroke. Just five days ago, Bruski posted a photo on his Instagram of him running along Portland's East End. He even replied to one of the comments calling Portland a nice city. The Patriots Twitter account posted a statement from Robert Kraft this afternoon that says, Bruski provides inspiration to so many and has a positive impact on people's lives by sharing his story and raising awareness of early detection of stroke. Bruski's family says he recognized arm weakness, face drooping, and speech difficulties right away. All of those are warning signs of a stroke. All right, are you planning a family? Maybe you already have young kids? Coming up, we're talking finances for young families with an expert here to answer your questions. Plus, a crew consisting entirely of teens sail from Bermuda to Maine. They're homecoming after some rough seas when we come back.
you making big plans for the future, maybe for your family or to start a family? Finances are likely a big part of that discussion. Financial planner Molly Reinfried with HM Payson is here. Molly, thank you so much for being thank here. You for me. Let's start off with talking about new parents to be. What is the first thing financially they should consider? Asking for a friend. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a mother of a one year old, I totally understand and I think the biggest thing that you can do as a family is figure out what the priorities are because when you're planning for a family, your long term goals, whether it be raising your child, planning for retirement or planning for college all have financial considerations. So rank order what's most important to you. We don't all necessarily get everything. So figuring out what those trade offs are going to start to be as you go through and a lot of that is taking an inventory where are you currently at financially. From a balance sheet perspective, you know, what are your assets, what are your debts, and then thinking about what the budget looks like and how that's going to look as kids come along. Gotcha. So how soon should parents start considering what's called a 529 plan? I'll let you explain that a little bit. Sure. I mean, it basically has to do with saving for college, right? Absolutely, yeah. A 529 plan is a great college savings tool. It's basically a, it acts like a retirement plan, but for college. So states sponsor them, and what it allows you to do is you put money into it, it will grow tax-free. If you take the money out and use it for college, you use that money tax-free. So it's really a tax benefit. Uh, the state of Maine in particular has a 529 plan and with it are some grants. So for example, if you're a Maine resident, money you put into it will get matched to a certain amount and you'll get a initial contribution the first year you open it. So the sooner you can start, the better. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be big dollar amounts, right? So even opening a 529, putting in $10 a week, you're going to get a lot of value out of that. It's hopefully invested for growth, and the longer you have that money in there for growth, the more you're going to get out of it with compounding returns. And the two biggest words, they are tax-free, which I yes, think is totally. key. Absolutely. One last question for you. What is the biggest mistake you see your clients make? Um, I think we see it later on, not necessarily as new parents, but oftentimes people prioritizing college over their retirement. Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, you can borrow for college, you can't borrow for retirement, right? So. College is important, getting it started is really valuable, getting that behavior going, but you don't want to sacrifice your own plans for that either if there are other options out there. Awesome, Molly, thank you so much for being here. She's gonna stick around during the commercial break. If you have more questions, start chiming in on our Facebook live stream right now. Very good, coming up, we're gonna take a closer look at Acadia's busy summer season and we're gonna learn about a new feature that's there to help visitors. And speaking of visits, meteorologist Jess Conley is coming back with her weekend forecast <laughs> next. <laughs> After enduring some rough seas, the spirit of Bermuda has arrived to its destination in Portland, Maine. The crew is so impressive. They're made up of teenagers, eight from Maine, eight from Bermuda. So some are here to explore Maine for the first time. A summer assignment unlike any other. It's such a great experience. A crew of mostly high school students manning a 112 foot Bermuda sloop for nearly a week. Just so nice to be home again. Sailing from Bermuda to Portland, Maine. 16 year old Kelly Yoon is from Falmouth. I personally have never really been into sailing. That was until she learned about Tall Ships Maine at school, a youth sail training organization. Being able to get this opportunity is just incredible. She worked with seven other teens from Maine and eight from Bermuda, like Andreas Glasgow. Coming together to make the ship run, run smoothly. But the sea at times, not so smooth. Yes, we did go through some rough seas. They started off at about five feet, 10 feet, 15, and then I believe 25 and a half feet was the biggest wave we went through. Um, luckily, I didn't get seasick. I don't usually get seasick. A small hurdle leading to larger life lessons. You're always going to encounter people and things that can either brighten your day or make it a little bit more difficult, but everybody is able to get along with everybody. So you just got to put the effort into it and everything will work out perfectly. So the Bermuda crew are most forward. They're most looking forward to trying some local donuts and lobster rolls. And while the ship is in Portland, it will be open for free tours this weekend. It's docked along Main Wharf. That is awesome. And it's cool that they were able to negotiate the rough seas. Right. And come out of that, you know, kind of feeling better about themselves, learning some leadership skills. 
I mean, today, <laughs> well, no, go ahead. Well, no, it was so cute. Speaking of the weather, it was yeah. so cute. Two siblings were there waiting for their sister to get off the boat from yeah. Falmouth, too. And they, the first thing they say is, she's so tan. <laughs> <laughs> about their sister. It was so That's cute. Awesome. Just really like Keith, cute. right? Yeah. 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 So right. tan. And he's just been working on it all week. Yeah. That's what I heard. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's so, the street. yeah, exactly. It's still so nice yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be warm tomorrow morning, but it's not exactly going to be another one of these gotcha. gorgeous days. But, okay. you know. We've been pretty spoiled, right? Totally. We've, we've been doing okay. Uh, here's a look at the current temperatures right now. 86 in Saco, 86 in Lewiston. Gray at 88 degrees, 90 now in Paris. Temperatures again, another warm day today. 86 is where we're at right now in Bangor. Look at Dover Foxcroft uh, up to 91 degrees. So temperatures tomorrow will be pretty similar, but uh, the weather falling from the sky, it's going to be a whole lot different. You can see the clouds already moving in. A couple showers and thunderstorms actually already moving into far northwestern Maine. Uh, a few are possible as we go through tonight, and then many more are possible as we go through the day tomorrow. And some of the storms tomorrow could be strong to severe, so we'll talk about that in just a second. But yeah, you can see a few showers and thunderstorms out there. Again, best chance of seeing those tonight is in far northern or far western Maine. And then tomorrow we'll all get a chance to see these showers and storms. So through the rest of tonight, again, a few scattered showers and storms possible. And then as we go into tomorrow morning, we'll see increasing clouds first thing in the morning. You can kind of see where the cold front is situated, that rain and those thunderstorms ahead of that. Uh, by noon tomorrow, you can see this line here continuing to move to the south and east. Look at the temperatures, though, already warming up into the 80s. Some of us may even be close to about 90 degrees tomorrow. This line will move through fairly quickly. By 5 o'clock, you can still see some uh, along the coast. I know a lot of outdoor events happen on the weekend, and uh, unfortunately, we'll be dealing with the timing on these mainly tomorrow afternoon and into tomorrow evening. Once the line of showers and storms moves through, the humidity will be a lot less. It'll feel a lot better and temperatures will cool off a little bit as we head into the day on a Sunday. Again, however, there is that severe weather risk tomorrow. We could see very heavy rain, downpours, some lightning, and some strong gusty winds are possible as well. A best chance for seeing those in the areas shaded in yellow. We'll keep you updated, of course, as we go throughout the day tomorrow. The best timing on that, or the most likely timing on that, will be tomorrow afternoon and into early tomorrow evening. But after tomorrow, we're on another gorgeous stretch of weather. Look at Sunday. Let's look at Monday. Still beautiful. It's going to stay nice and dry. Temperatures won't be quite as warm as what we've had recently, but we're going to see sunshine going through most of the week next week. It is looking pretty good, guys. Again, seas two to four feet for tomorrow. Winds from the southwest at 10 to 15. Could gust as high as 20 tomorrow afternoon. That water temperature, though, down east, still chilly in the low 50s there in Portland. Uh, at Casco Bay, we're at 65 for an ocean temperature. So temperatures warm tomorrow, but the weather a whole different story with those scattered showers and thunderstorms clearing though for the day on Sunday. It's looking pretty nice Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, even into Wednesday. The temperatures will be a little bit more comfortable too, so it won't be this hot and humid situation, but still going to be nice. We're doing so well. I like don't want to talk about it and scare it away or right, anything. Right, you can't jinx it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Looks good still, guys. Awesome. Yes. All right. Nothing, there's nothing to say when you've got great know. weather. You My know. job is so boring lately, but I'm, I'm okay with it. It's a layup. Yeah. We're <laughs> living in a postcard so. is I know. what's really happening. So true. <laughs> Take your pictures now. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Speaking of that, being touristy and all yeah. those things, today was a perfect day for visitors to Maine to spend some time outside, and no better place to do that than at Acadia National Park. News editor Sean Stackhouse was there today and joins us now. Sean, this must be a really busy time of year for Acadia. Chris, busy is honestly an understatement. I was talking with a park ranger there who said he's been working for 20 years at Acadia and has never seen it as busy as it is right now. You know, when I showed up uh, to do an interview there, it took me 15 minutes to just find a parking spot. That's how many people were at the Hulls Cove Visitor Center. And it even goes beyond that. All over Acadia was just absolutely packed. Cadillac Mountain, the carriage roads, a lot of people traveling to Maine had the perfect weekend to do it. Some park goers, they uh, also rec were welcomed with the uh, brand new Hulls Cove Visitor Center. How is this going to help visitors? Well, it's a absolutely gorgeous building, Chris and Lindsay. Really what it's going to do is it's going to streamline the question process to park rangers there. Their lines are streamlined, making it so much easier for folks to figure out where they're going and get advice. There's also more bathrooms and 
It was only just finished a little over a week ago, so just in time for this extremely busy season when everyone is just flocking to Acadia, whether you're from Maine or not. And, you know, as we were hearing before from Jess, you, you couldn't have asked for a better time of year to be here. But I'll have a lot more on all happenings around Acadia coming up tonight at 6. Chris and Lindsay, back to you. Very good, Sean. Thanks so much. If you can ever check out the carriage roads, too, yeah. those are really spectacular. On this day, 30 years ago, a legendary TV show was born. In 1989, the Seinfeld Chronicles, the pilot to the sitcom Seinfeld, aired on NBC, and it was the beginning of nine seasons worth of episodes. Today, fans are celebrating the 30th anniversary of the pilot by sharing their favorite moments and episodes. All right. A lot more coming up on New Center Maine at 530. Pat Callahan joins us with a preview. Hey, Pat. Hey, Lindsay and Chris. We're going to hear more from New Hampshire State Police about uh, they're making sure that that big memorial ride that is set for tomorrow is going to be a safe one. It may attract thousands of riders, so safety is a big priority here. and They don't want to see more trouble on the roads. Strawberry season has been very slow to arrive this year. That had organizers of a big annual strawberry festival in a small Maine town worried that they might not be able to pull it off this year but we'll show you how it all worked out and we'll meet a man who really likes graduation season enough to attend not one or two but more than a hundred a year it's all coming up in just a few minutes on news center at 5 30. i feel like that graduation song get pretty repetitive after I a while. imagine you hear it in your sleep <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right when we come back lego goes green Regal Cinemas is reportedly preparing to launch an unlimited movie subscription plan. According to Deadline.com, the details are currently being worked out between Regal's parent company and major movie studios. The subscription-based service will reportedly offer three tiers of pricing with access to unlimited tickets. Pricing is expected to be based on theater location, which means subscribers may pay more in certain cities. Subscribers will also receive 10% off on concessions. It is suspected the plan will be finalized later this month. And in Maine, there are two Regal Cinemas. And in New Hampshire, there are three. The colorful and beloved Lego brick is a staple with kids around the world, but its production is not a love affair with the environment. Lego products are molded from oil-based plastic, which is a problem for the climate. In 2017, Lego created 1.1 million tons of CO2. Well, the company announced it will invest more than $150 million into developing future climate-friendly packaging in bricks made out of plants. And they're off to a start. Lego has one type of brick made from sugar cane. You can't eat it, I don't think. Still, only 2% of Lego bricks are made of sugar. The other 98% are still oil based. Very cool. Very fun to play with them, not fun to step on them. No, not <laughs> at all. And you as a parent, as soon to be parent, will know. We'll find out soon. The pain. Very good. New Center Maine at 530 starts right now.